Hey guys, how are you doing? Many of you who want to travel to Canada during these times, maybe to visit your loved ones, maybe your COPR is expiring soon, you are willing to travel to Canada through some special flights that are being run from around the world. So you might have many questions and I am seeing those questions already in the Facebook group in my comments. So in this video, we'll be answering all of those questions about the airports, about the flights, about the initial accommodation, about self-isolation. And it would not be me who would be answering those questions. I'll be talking to Hamad, who recently landed in Toronto from Dubai. So he'll be sharing his experiences and, and I'm pretty sure that those experiences will help you a lot. So don't go anywhere. I'll be right back. Right, so thank you so much, Hamad, for uh, joining us today and agreeing to do this. Um, so would you like to tell you a little about yourself, uh, from where do you belong, where do you work, and uh, why did you choose Canada? Yes, uh, hi guys, hey uh, Shaitanshu. Uh, yeah, I basically am born and raised in Dubai, uh, and uh, originally from Pakistan. And uh, my uh, basically, my work is in aviation, which as you know, is the hardest hit during these COVID times. <laughs> So I have a lot more to talk about that later. Um, and uh, the reason I chose Canada, it was a great opportunity. Uh, I started my journey a year ago and uh, now here I am, uh, almost done with self-isolation as well. So uh, looking forward to getting out there as well. Right. And uh, as you told me that you belong from aviation industry, which is probably the worst hit. And you know that, you know, it would be very tough for you uh, here this time in Canada, maybe finding a job, maybe settling over. So why did you choose this time that you wanted to come here and then, uh, you know, you want to st start your life all over again at this time, especially? Yes. So firstly, uh, you know, my COPR, uh, well, the visa was getting expired on uh, June 18th. So uh, I was in a dilemma. I was like, okay, you know, I can either come here, take these special flights or, you know, I would call them special because there's literally no flights that were going on. Um, or uh, maybe get an extension uh, because I know that a lot of people online I saw on the forums they were uh, seeking the extension because they had their uh, paperwork expired but making this decision to come during a pandemic was obviously a very uh, you know big decision that I made um, I decided to do this because I felt like I can really you know uh, get it out of the way you know all this anxiety all these questions that people had Oh my gosh, are are people doing it? Are they scared of the you know the virus? Uh, is it safe to travel? But uh, thankfully, my experience was very good. Uh, you know, I had a lot of support from the family, friends, and even you know uh, people like you, uh, giving out the videos and the advices of what's going on. That's why I was very uh, grateful to be here to share my experience as well to everybody else. Yes, thank you so much for that. And how was your experience? So uh, when you came over from Dubai, was it uh, locked down there? Was it a kind of a curfew situation there? And then you like you must have, if that's the case, then you must have failed, uh, faced some troubles in getting the cab or maybe, you know, uh, just reaching the airport might be a struggle. And after that, maybe the airport, what problems did you face and how easy or difficult was it for you? Yes, so, you know, uh, it was such a fluid uh, situation, ever-changing situation with, you know, new rules coming in every day for every country, actually. Uh, in Dubai, it was similar. Uh, you know, the numbers were going up, some recovery rate was going up as well, thankfully. But there were certain uh, days they were doing the uh, lockdown, uh, the curfew. It was certain timings. So uh, the timings was uh, 8 p.m. to 6 a.m. Uh, for me, the flight, uh, how it went was, uh, it was recommended you come four hours prior to the flight. The departure time was 9 a.m. Again, completely different from your regular travel experience. This was absolutely bizarre, kind of eerie, but you know, uh, at least they were all on top of things when it came to you know taking uh, safety as their priority. Uh, so for me, uh, I had to be at the airport four hours before. Luckily, I live literally 10 minutes away from the airport. So uh, I, I'm on the flight path of the airport and uh, what my parents uh, were there, so they dropped me off. Um, there was no regulation on, uh, you know, after 6 a.m. you could easily go and um, uh, drive around. It wasn't an issue. So I left uh, after the curfew was over and uh, my parents had dropped me off. So the family was together and it was allowed to travel together. Uh, there was no issue. 
And upon arrival at the airport, it was a complete, completely different experience. So if you want me to go into that, I can also. Uh, yeah, yeah, sure. I, I would love to do that. And at the same time, I would also, you know, um, show our viewers the video that you made. That is really helpful. Um, so thank you so much for that. I would like to know that, uh, you know, how, what kind of situation was there at the airport? Was there too many people around? I'm sure that social distancing would be maintained at such places, but in the planes, was, was that possible? Yeah, you're right. Basically, there was social distancing maintained throughout the journey. Mm -hmm. So the moment that I entered the airport, uh, in fact, they, they changed it a lot. Uh, only passengers were allowed inside the terminal, which wasn't the case before, even for check-in counters. So uh, after that, uh, you know, there were uh, even there was first thing was the thermal screening. So you would go through the thermal screenings. You had people in full PPE, people from the health authorities there, just you know, monitoring everything. Uh, which, you know, initially feels really weird because, you know, if you've traveled a lot, you know, you're like, this is a completely, you know, interesting experience. Uh, then we were actually handed out a very um, nice box of a travel hygiene kit uh, from uh, uh, Emirates Airlines. Mm -hmm. And it had masks, uh, hand sanitizers, uh, disinfection wipe uh, and gloves. So they, they gave you a nice little uh, package. Uh, moving forward, um, you know, terminal completely empty. There were, I think, four flights that day. Um, and uh, yeah, so basically once I went, boarded the aircraft, the boarding was completely different again. It was done through zones, everybody was maintaining their distance, you know, people not getting up like crazy and going into the plane like it used to be. Uh, so, um, and upon uh, uh, entering the aircraft, uh, uh, there was a gap between the seats. Now, initially what I had done was, uh, when you check in online, uh, I looked at my seat and I said, okay, I'm going to book this seat next to the window where there's nobody else. Uh, when I actually got my boarding card, it was different. And usually, you know, you will get the same seat, but it was different. So I asked them, is there a reason why, you know, it's different? Obviously, I know, I understand. I'm not going to question it because of the certain situation. Yeah. Uh, they told me that um, the second part of the aircraft, so there were not a lot of people on the, on the on, uh, in board. Second part of the aircraft was left completely clean and yeah. empty. Yeah. So to me, that was really strange because, you know, I would think that they would disperse people even more if they had the ability to do it. But I think the reason why they did this was because the return flight going back from Toronto to Dubai, mm -hmm. uh, they wanted to keep that clean so that people didn't come on board and, you know, uh, from the ground staff or something. Yes. Yeah. So it, it was a very strange experience. But yeah, there was a gap uh, maintained uh, between uh, passengers. Mm -hmm. And uh, one thing that I was very impressed with was the service, uh, especially in a time like this. Uh, top-notch service uh, these guys were wearing masks uh, above the mask they had the N95 and the gloves as well and full on PPE suit so I was you know for a 14-hour flight uh, to have that on and you know very difficult. it is very difficult so I, I commend the crew of, uh, of that flight they did really good right. and how was your experience here in Canada so you landed in the Toronto airport the Pearson airport Yes, I landed in Pearson Airport. Uh, my landing experience was interesting because I had re uh, read a lot of, uh, you know, things before this. You know, you're always curious to see how it's going to, the, the officers going to be, what questions are they going to ask. So uh, surprisingly, there was a really long line for the immigrants. Uh, you know, usually I've heard people say that, oh, yeah, within 10 minutes we were done and uh, whatnot. Uh, I got in there and there was a line that went really far back. Uh, almost, I remember seeing the, uh, Service Canada office as well uh, next to it, uh, which was close uh, as you know currently they're all closed and uh, This line was pretty long. In fact, I noticed that the officers had to uh, call for backup because there are so many people So they actually called a few other officers from the other place and then it uh, went faster um, So uh, I would say yeah, the experience was great. Uh, there was no thermal screening done uh, Upon arrival, we really had to tell them about the self-isolation plan. They should be doing it, right? Yeah, I feel like maybe it was like hidden. I didn't see it. Uh, you know, it wasn't like obvious, but uh, I'm sure the thermal screening must have been done somehow. Oh, okay. um, right, right, right. Yeah, yeah. I, I think for me, I just maybe didn't notice it. Uh, you know, in Dubai, it was really obvious you were going through these gates and, you know, they were saying that you're going through the thermal screening. Yeah. Uh, whereas here, you know, maybe they did it at a certain stage, but I didn't notice it. Okay. Um, and, um, yeah, so uh, the overall the experience was great. Uh, the officer that I had for uh, my immigration work and everything, mm -hmm. uh, very quiet, straightforward, just asked for the address. That was about it. You know, I've heard a lot of stories, you know, a lot of questions people ask, a lot of different things. Um, well, one thing I must say, the self-isolation plan was the most uh, important part yeah. uh, because multiple people had asked me about that. 
where I'm staying, the address, if I have uh, contact details of the person. So the uh, the uh, border security uh, agency, uh, when we arrived there, uh, firstly, they had asked that if we had already filled out the forms for the coronavirus, it's, it's called the coronavirus form. Okay. And it basically asks you uh, about your location, your self-isolation plan, contact details and whatnot. And uh, if you do, if you hadn't filled it in the airplane, uh, you know, you, you can fill it out here. And then they were handing out, I have these things right here with me. It's just a form. I don't know if it's clear right now, but uh, it just tells you of basically all the rules and regulations, you know, making sure you're cleaning your hands, uh, you know, uh, staying away from people, not having visitors, uh, and really being really self-responsible, you know. Because at the end of the day, you know, uh, no one's really going to come knock on the door. I mean, they could, because uh, they have all the details. But uh, at the end of the day, it's about you taking care of yourself and the people around you. Right. So um, these guidelines are really helpful, obviously, you know, in a time like this, even a little uh, little cost will feel like, uh, uh, something is bad that's happening but you just have to focus on yourself and you know the people around you. so okay coming over to a very curious question that many people have that how do you find accommodation or a place right after landing uh, so did you find Airbnb are you staying in a hotel where are you staying yes yeah, so uh, you know this was a again a very challenging thing for me to do especially in a time like this because availability and you know do the host really want somebody coming in from outside how will it work so uh, initially, I did search uh, stuff on you know work, uh, websites like Booking.com, Hotels.com, uh, Airbnb. I hadn't used it myself personally a lot, but my family did, so they did recommend it to me. And uh, I think one thing about the Airbnb is you have a very close connection and uh, contact to the host. Uh, you know, you can always text them, message them. So before uh, arriving, I looked at a place, uh, obviously something reasonable, something that is closer to places there. You know, there's grocery accessible, even though, so the other thing is my relatives are here. So uh, you have to tell them who's bringing you groceries and medicine in case. Mm -hmm. So I had given their contact and they helped me out. Uh, however, they do live a little far away. So I still wanted something that was accessible to maybe Uber Eats or DoorDash here is obviously very popular. Um, and I found one that was closer to downtown in Bloordale. And before I had booked it, what I did was I um, messaged the host. And uh, I actually made it clear to her that I'm coming here as a new immigrant and I will need to be self-isolating for 14 days. Uh, again, it's up to you to do that or not, but I, for me, clarity and transparency is the best, you know, if it's a yes or no. So uh, she said that she's absolutely fine with self-isolation. In fact, she had asked me if I needed any more uh, things, uh, you know, in the room, if there's something specific that I needed. So I, I, I came in and I actually had like a uh, hand sanitizer and a mask. So, I mean, the host really took good care of me here. Um, so yeah, I think uh, Airbnb and what I would personally recommend if people are traveling in the next maybe two weeks, one month, uh, you know, shoot them a message just to get an idea of what they want. And I'm sure they'll be accommodating uh, considering the situation as well, you know, how it's going on. Uh, but it's always good to have that connection. Maybe they can even help you out even more with maybe groceries or anything you want. Okay, so here I would like to add something uh, as well because I've seen a couple of questions in our uh, Dream Abroad Canada Facebook group where people were asking that uh, is the government providing that facility of self-isolation uh, self isolation, uh, maybe when you arrive at the airport if you don't have any concrete plans then uh, what happens do they actually send you to the uh, to any uh, quarantine place or maybe uh, like who's to bear the, those expenses if such thing happens so I have never heard of anything like that basically that a government is actually um, providing you of like any quarantine or maybe any shelter place because I uh, I've talked to a couple of people including you and uh, uh, you know people have been managing their own accommodation so uh, this is something that we need to make sure be before landing in Canada that we do have a concrete plan we do have a concrete address that, that we can give to them and confirm that you know we would be living over there we would be self-isolating uh, so it won't be the government's responsibility, it is your own responsibility if you're landing that you have to take care of uh, your self-isolation period of 14 days, right? Yes, that's correct. 14 days. In fact, one more thing I want to add uh, is uh, basically a lot of people have also asked me a few questions about it, about self-isolation. And, uh, you know, can they do it if they have someone here like friends or family who are here, who live here, who have a place here? Now, uh, from what I know, the answer to that is as long as you are isolated. You know, a lot of people get, uh, you know, they think, oh, we do have family here. Mm -hmm. That's right, it's okay. But 
I've noticed a trend here in Canada. There's a lot of these basement uh, kind of apartments that people have, uh, you know, changed into their base. See, that's absolutely fine as long as you have a separate entrance, uh, separate bathroom, separate, you know, whatever to just isolate. Mm -hmm. So just to bring it back, you know, uh, I, I've had a few people ask me this as well, but the whole point is to isolate from, you know, even family. Yeah. Even family, like nobody's immune if you have that uh, virus in you. Exactly. Might even your family members, so it's better to you know self isolate yourself, just to yourself, not to the fam, not to the family. Okay, right. so uh, moving over to two last questions. So, how did you manage getting uh, maybe a SIM card, getting the SIM number, and have you opened the bank account yet? Have you got the health card? Like, what, what's happening? So, uh, thankfully, uh, as I mentioned, I do have relatives here, so uh, they did help me with the groceries and everything, including the SIM card. Uh, they managed to get me a number temporarily. And uh, now, in order of the other documentation that needs to be done for Mila, as you said, the health card and the SIN uh, number as well. Uh, now, again, I was in a dilemma because uh, for the SIN, I believe that uh, the rule is that you can mail your documentation uh, right now as the officer currently closed Service Canada. Yes. Um, so for that, it takes, you know, I think 15, 20 days, depending okay. on... It doesn't. So that's a good news for you. Um... Okay. Basically, what happens is that uh, there, there's an online portal. It's a very short form that you need to fill, and you just need to provide a couple of uh, documents over there. I think your passport and your, uh, you know, PR stamp, something like that. After that, you just need to. Uh, when you submit it, there's no fees, obviously. Uh, after that, you would get it like in just one week time. And I'm telling this from my own experience because I uh, submitted that for my for my wife last week, and we got it just like yesterday. So it's oh, just wow. one week time. You'll you'll get it. And that's a, an estimated time. Obviously, it can be you know uh, plus minus two days. Uh, so that is something good that because Service Canada is slow, so you can uh, get the SIN number from there. So that is one point. Uh, apart from that, you can also apply for the for your health card. I think the um, I mean th that rule is still open. That they're not they have waived off that three month period of uh, you know of the health card, so you don't have to get your own health insurance when you're landing here. And of course, because of that, you can apply directly as Service Ontario. I think Service Ontario is kind of uh, started to open again, so you can go there and uh, like once you're once you come out of your self isolation, and you can apply for uh, your health insurance card. Uh, so that is something that you'll get. But both for both of these things, you need to have a concrete address. So maybe better you give your uh, your friends or a relative address so that you know it reaches there and you can collect it from there. If you're living in Airbnb. So uh, you might be moving to an, another place uh, for a temporary accommodation, maybe for the next uh, three, four months or whatever. So you should be giving that address. Okay, and that brings me to my next, last question probably. So how are you uh, planning things ahead? You're done with the self-isolation. Thankfully, you're safe uh, and you're keeping everybody else safe. Uh, so how, is you, how are you planning like uh, things going ahead? Are you planning to, uh, you know, getting a new, like uh, a lease for some time or, uh, How's it going to do? And about your job as well, yes, because you're from aviation. Yes, so uh, this is interesting because just today my, uh, itself, I was working on these couple of things. Uh, firstly, uh, yeah, my plan is to definitely stay here for longer now. There's another rule that uh, maybe a lot of people might not know, but in order for me to go back to the UAE, to Dubai, uh, I need to get approval from the ministry through uh, something called ICA. Okay. And uh, yeah, a lot of, uh, uh, you know, my uh, friends and people online have also questioned me about that. You know, are you going back to the UAE? So what I have uh, planned right now is to definitely stay here for a little bit longer, uh, looking at the situation because it seems like things are opening up here, of course, as well, and as well as in Dubai. Yes. And uh, so I'm very hopeful of the next month. Uh, that's why what I'm going to plan on doing is definitely looking for another Airbnb. Uh, my relatives have uh, offered me to stay with them and uh, I can easily go there as well. Uh, but the reason, one reason why I'm not trying to do that is because I still need my space for work because I am technically working remotely and um, you know, so I, I do still need uh, my space for, for work. Uh, and uh, yeah, so I will definitely be looking into another Airbnb. When it comes to jobs, uh, you're right, uh, you know, um, it's as unfortunate as it is, aviation has been hit the hardest. Um, but at the same time, you know, I feel uh, a bit more uh, confident in how things are looking uh, for the future. Uh, for me, specifically, my branch in aviation is business aviation, so private jet charters and private jets. Uh, that's a bit more different than commercial, which has been 
hit the hardest, if anything. You know, commercial. Uh, I feel really bad for so many employees that have been laid off, and it, it's very unfortunate. But uh, at the same time, I I still feel like you know it's a good chance for people to diversify, and uh, you know see if they're in commercial, maybe they can look into private where I'm at. Or maybe if I'm in private, I can look into other uh, avenues in within aviation, airspace, uh, airports. So there's always opportunity. Uh, again, it's going to be tough. Uh, I am uh, actively seeking, looking around, and checking what opportunities are there. But at the same time, I do have my time, and uh, I have, I'm very grateful to my work as well back in Dubai to, uh, for being very flexible with me. Because a lot of the times, people have issues coming, you know, traveling because they can't get days off. Um, and one positive that did come out through this whole COVID situation was people working remotely from home, and you know taking that to a very efficient level of working remotely. So, since I was working for three months remotely, it kind of made sense that I can do it from here too. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I'm hopeful, man. Let's see. I think aviation should uh, get flying again soon, hopefully. Um, but uh, as of now, yeah, you're right. Things are a little difficult. Uh, so, hoping to get another Airbnb if anything. Uh, there, uh, I can tell you one thing that uh, prices are very well, very good right now because of the situation. So that's one advantage. Um, but uh, yeah, uh, that's my plan for now. So thank you so much. I think uh, that was really helpful uh, for all the viewers that, who are thinking of moving to Canada during these times. I recently did a poll in my uh, Facebook group as well, where I asked people that are they willing to take that risk? And surprisingly, they, most of the people actually said that you know they are willing to take that risk. Of coming over here because it's it's a mental psyche that when, once you've taken the decision, you've got the PR and you're waiting in your home country, you you want to th get things moving. So uh, most of the people I believe are willing to take that risk of uh, you know coming over in a safe manner, and then after that when they settle down, maybe you know looking for a job, it might be difficult for most of the people. But yes, people are willing to take that take that risk, including you. So thank you so much uh, for all the uh, you know. For, for doing this video first of all and for shooting that video that I'm going to show in this uh, in this as a part of this video so thank you so much and uh, I'm sure you would have uh, many questions so if you look down uh, you know in the comments of my videos you, you might find many questions for you so um, you know if you get time uh, please feel free to answer those questions because you'll be the right person to answer those ones absolutely I want to thank you so much for having me here and I really wanted to share my experience and I know a lot of people have different questions and as much as I can help, um, you know, I'm willing to do that. So I appreciate, uh, you know, the time and effort that you've made for me as well. And uh, yeah, uh, again, I'm free, uh, feel free if anybody has more questions that come through you, I can always ask you. Sure. Thank you so much. It was lovely talking to you. Take care. Likewise. Take care.